Hogwarts Legacy has been out for two months and the results are in. The sad boycott has failed. That is shocking. I am shocked right now. What can we learn from this pathetic attempt at shaming people into not enjoying a fun game? Mostly that secondhand politics don't matter, especially these politics. But let's look at the whole thing. Should I gesture with the wand the entire video? Cup. So at this point, you already know, Rowling is a subhuman transphobe, right? She's evil incarnate. I mean, it's been asserted on the internet so many times at this point, it has to be true. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I did some digging into why exactly she's such a transphobic monster and it's pretty hilarious, but I'll get to that later. For now, what's important is that you know she's literally Hitler and you wouldn't want to be associated with Hitler, right? Right? In order to avoid being like Hitler, we need to boycott this game. As a matter of fact, we need to create a list of everyone who streams this game so we know who the bad guys are. I think their stream should probably have to carry some kind of mark. I think that's a good idea. A double plus good idea. This is peak internet, really. Streamers were harassed, threats were made, an actual list of public enemies was created, all for a game that has nothing to do with Rowling other than being licensed to exist in the world that she made. Now, the boycott failed hilariously, with the game selling 12 million copies in its first two weeks. The next WB earnings report will likely show a number twice that. Now, while I think this cause is completely outrageous and I totally disagree with the trans movement, I also think that if you believe in something, you should support it or not support things working against it, whatever. Just because I'm brilliant and handsome doesn't mean you have to listen to me. But I would humbly suggest that you not set your sights on something made inside the universe of the best-selling book series of all time. Fighting against something large doesn't automatically make you David against Goliath. Sometimes you're just a dumbass with a sling in your hand. You might be thinking, Greg, something's better than nothing. Maybe these people won't win by taking on a book giant, but they're just trying to help. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. No, they weren't. No one involved in this boycott wanted to help anyone except for themselves and their own feelings of righteousness. This is called slacktivism, and it's a really good opportunity for us to ask, why do we care about some things and not others? Is it just because the news and the internet tells us to? You, viewer, are probably upset about some injustice in the world, and it's a really good idea to ask, why that one and not any of the others? Because you can't care about everything. I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but if you write down the reasons you care about something and then try to prove yourself wrong, you will either deepen your commitment to a worthy cause or discard something that you didn't need to care about in the first place. You're a winner either way. And once you know what you really care about, then you can actually go out and really do something real about it. Getting your hands dirty is the only way to really make the world better. Your tax dollars aren't gonna do it. Talking about Hogwarts Legacy, you know for a fact I've got my Ravenclaw tumbler. And uh, hey, Jean-Luc, what are you drinking? Tea, Pearl Grey, hot. I've got the same thing! Back to the topic at hand, popularity doesn't even guarantee success, as Square Enix's Avengers game proved last year. That is one big pile of shit. No, the real reason the boycott failed is because the game is great. It looks good, it plays well, it delivers on what most fans of the franchise want. To live in the wizarding world. If you look up reviews of this game, you're gonna find people saying it's kind of boring, but in a good way. Yeah, and there's some overarching plot about an evil goblin or something, but the bulk of the game is just living a magical existence. Running around, finding little magic secrets in the castle, flying across the countryside, exploring the nooks and crannies of the game world. It's a relaxing joy to play. Here's the first lesson. The product is king. Everything else comes second. People will overlook and forgive so many things if you deliver a good experience. Okay, listen, um, don't tell my church friends I said this, but uh, Chick-fil-A isn't the best chicken. Boo this man! No! I said what I said. Popeyes and Canes are better, but CFA is popular. Why? Because they get your shit right, they do it quickly, and serving you is their pleasure. This game delivered on the promise, which made it really hard to give a damn about Rowling and her secondhand politics and what she might or might not do with her royalty money. So what do I mean by secondhand politics? This game was not made by Rowling. 
She had zero involvement in its development. The developer, Port Key Games, who was owned by WB, worked with her team to make sure the contents of the game would fit in with the wizarding world. Rowling herself was probably off on her private island, hunting trans people for sport or strangling puppies. Just, I don't know what she does, I'm just told she's evil. Her only involvement was to sign a contract to let them use her copyrighted ideas in exchange for what I imagine to be a swimming pool full of cash. So when you buy this game, a small portion of your money goes to her and she uses that money to fund anti-LGBT efforts. Maybe. This part gets a little fuzzy. I don't know if you're aware of this, but sometimes people on the interwebs will just assert shit they don't have basis for so that they can bolster their opinion. No way. Yes way. I looked for the anti-trans and anti-LGBT groups that she is funding. I was shocked when I found just one. Get a load of this bitch. She funds a sexual abuse crisis center that will only employ and serve real biological women. Crazy, right? I feel like even Satan is like, damn, bitch, calm down with the evil. I mean, you can argue what you want, but their statement is that women who have been sexually abused want to feel safe in a space that is only for women. And I feel like that's kind of legit. But wait, there's more. She also donated to the GoFundMe for Allison Bailey, who is suing her former employer in a wrongful termination suit after she was let go for posting some anti-trans tweets. Yet another reason to stay off Twitter, as I pointed out right here. Now, Bailey was fired from an LGBT nonprofit called Stonewall, so by funding her effort to sue them, Rowling is obviously trying to destroy LGBT groups. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I googled for over an hour. Those are the only two concrete examples I could find of her giving money to someone who is anti-trans. If you have an example of a group she actually gives money to that's actually working against trans people, let me know. I want to be accurate. I'll put it in a pinned comment. I hope I got that Bailey situation right. It involved a lot of weird words like barrister and tribunal. These English are always up to weird stuff with the language. They've got their Zs and their schedules and their lieutenants. Y'all are crazy. Do they actually wear the wigs in court? The only thing I've got to go on is that movie, About Time. If you haven't seen About Time, you gotta make that a priority. It's heartfelt, it's amazing. You owe yourself watching this movie. Here's the second big lesson. People don't trace money or politics past the first degree. You see the jumps here? You give your money to Port Key Games. They give some of that as royalty to Rowling. She uses some of that to give to all kinds of groups. Some of those groups do some things that some people on Twitter, Fantasyland, consider to be anti-trans, though Rowling would consider it to be pro-woman, though I am getting there. That's a lot of steps, and nobody gives that much of a shit. That's why the boycott failed. People might avoid something for first-hand political reasons. For example, a lot of people are not gonna go see the upcoming Flash movie because Ezra Miller is in it twice. His face is gonna be in your face for two solid hours, so if you don't like what he's been up to, you're not gonna go see that movie. First-hand politics is all any of us has time for, and honestly, you gotta draw the line somewhere. If you trace the money backward from the everyday things that you buy, you're gonna find a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of that money is used by somebody for some shit that you don't agree with. You're you're not evil for buying fucking Swiss rolls, okay? I don't know where the money went when I bought this book. Это Гарри Поттер на по-русски. Может быть, вы хотите говорить по-русски. Или читать по-русски. Well, if that's the case, then I strongly recommend Audible, as I always do. You can use Pimsleur courses to learn a new language. You can learn about anything you want. Lectures, college-level lectures, or just a great performance of your favorite fiction. Why should you learn new things? Why should you learn a new language? Porque es bueno ejercicio mental. If you want to try Audible for free for an entire month, I will magically make an affiliate code appear in the description below. The final lesson is that most people don't respect the trans movement. Sure, they're bullied into silence, which is a hilarious whole other can of worms, but do not be fooled by social media. The ma overwhelming majority of people either do not care or do not support the trans movement, especially a growing segment of women, and with very good reason. Rowling's supposed transphobic statements were actually pro-woman. The whole thing blew up when she retweeted an article that was about menstruating persons, and she had had enough. See, the reason that a lot of women are starting to fight back against the trans movement is because it is robbing them of their core identity as women. Rowling summed it up in a couple of tweets. She said, if sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. 
it isn't hate to speak the truth. Then she said, the idea that women like me, who've been empathetic to trans people for decades, feeling kinship because they're vulnerable in the same way as women, to male violence, for example, the idea that we hate trans people because they think sex is real and has lived consequences is nonsense. Then she said, I respect every trans person's right to live any way they feel is authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. She's spot on. She wants to protect the identity of women, and it's very telling that that was labeled anti-trans. That should terrify women and tell them exactly who is more important to the online mob. Ladies, if push comes to shove, they're not gonna pick your side. And there will be a clash eventually. The idea that trans women are women is incompatible with the notion that women are immutably women and therefore are unique in their own right. As Rowling correctly pointed out, if sex isn't real, women aren't real. I know it sounds dramatic when people say, oh, trans is erasing women. But by definition, it is true. You know, something I find really funny is that whenever conservative people like myself talk about being pro-life, Idiots in handmaiden costume just apparate out of nowhere as though it's some sick burn. It's like a really, it's proving some really cool point. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. Being pro-life is one of the reasons that I, I work in foster care. Um, you don't have to do anything to, to hold a pro-life stance, pro-anything stance. Like you can have your opinion, it's still, it's still valid. I just think it's worth noting that your opinion carries a lot more weight and people will actually listen to what you have to say if you have actions to back up your words. Just something to keep in mind. Anyway, the reason the handmaidens are so hilarious is because they're implying that we want to reduce women to faceless birthing vessels. But we're not the ones calling women menstruating persons, chest feeders, birthing persons. We don't comment on their front holes. You don't hear us evil misogynistic conservatives using the most dehumanizing fucking language imaginable to describe women. Lastly, people wondered in my last video why I don't talk about trans men. Mostly because I don't care. Statistically, they're not even an issue. They're not a threat to men, certainly. Sports competitions aren't being stolen from us. Man of the Year awards aren't being given to them. They're not out here being applauded publicly and telling us how to actually be men. Male-centered products aren't being hawked by trans men. After recording, I had a commenter bring up an interesting point that the trans male thing is actually hurting women also. You know, ladies, you're getting screwed on both sides of this deal uh, that basically it's telling women they need to be men to get ahead. It's preying on young women. Honestly, like most woke politics, the trans movement only continues to affirm my male godhood. Yeah, either women want to be men, or you have men being women and being better at it than women. Or at least they're getting awards for it. <laughs> it's all more points for the patriarchy. Thanks, trans folks. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the game, the boycott, trans movement, your Hogwarts house? Just tell me something. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.